Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, February 25th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. With the release of Google Chrome 80 around the corner, one feature has gotten some discussion and security concern, and that's the scroll to text fragment feature. The way this is supposed to work is that I can send you a URL. At the end of the URL, I add some text and then the browser will automatically scroll to the first time this text shows up on a particular page. Now, in existing browsers and in Google Chrome before this upcoming version, you were still able to direct the user to a particular part of the page, but you had to add a specific a tag in order to mark this location. And then you would add a hash mark at the end of the URL and with the tag that was predefined, but I could not send you to sort of an arbitrary point within the page. So the way this is useful is that if I want to send you a link to an article and I want to sort of tell you about a particular paragraph, whoever wrote the article didn't specifically mark the paragraph, I could add some text from this paragraph and the browser would automatically scroll to the paragraph as you click on the link. Sounds like a relatively simple, innocent feature, but there are some privacy concerns. And Peter Snyder, who is a researcher and working with Brave Software, the privacy-focused browser, did point out some of these issues. Essentially, what this could potentially lead to is if I sent you a link to a page with a particular content, I may be able to detect if this content is present on the page. And as a result, I could leak sensitive information if this page contained private information. Think, for example, about like a medical page that lists search terms that you recently searched for. I could now send you a link and check if you recently searched for a particular disease by adding the name of the disease to the link. So far, two distinct methods were identified to figure out whether or not the text is present. Now, one would be to figure out how long did it take the browser to find the text. I would have to trigger another action whenever the text is found, uh, but the idea is that uh, the search is faster if the text is at the top of the page. Well, uh, Google actually addressed this particular problem. They will always search the entire page even after they found the match. And with that, they sort of have more or less that same time behavior where you can't use the timing attack to figure out whether or not the text is present. But there's another way how I can figure out whether or not you found that text. And that only works if it's further down in the page. And if I have some access to traffic uh, to and from the browser, which of course is what we're protecting against with TLS. So it is a valid attack. If I'm able to deduct that the text was present based on traffic that I'm seeing coming from your browser to a website. And the trick here is that browsers will only load certain content if the page is actually if that part of the page is actually displayed. So think about it. you know a lot of pages have like sidebars with images and such. Those images are often only loaded if you're scrolling down far enough to see the image. And if the text I'm searching for is towards the bottom of the page, then again, I could check, are you loading resources? Is there some evidence that you're still loading data after you clicked on the link? And with this again, I could leak some information. Overall, I don't think this is sort of the end of privacy as, as some people uh, kind of put it. The attack is tricky and uh, only works on specific pages. I don't really think that this is sort of a universal attack that allows you to read other pa people's uh, web pages that they have loaded over at TLS. So don't really see it as a huge deal, but then again, that feature is not really all that terribly important. It's actually a bit complex to set up these links. So I doubt your average user will even figure out how to create uh, those links for text fragments. 
at this point, I don't think it's a reason to not upgrade uh, to uh, Google Chrome 80 when it comes out. Uh, not sure, and that's something I still have to figure out whether there's a switch to turn it off, but it will be turned on by default. The feature itself was discussed on the web platform Incubator Community Group, which is sort of a part of W3C, the uh, standard organization here, but uh, really more a group where sort of new features are proposed and kicked around. So at this point, it's not a standard feature yet, very heavily sort of supported by Google, but uh, other browser makers don't sort of appear to jump on that bandwagon right now. Well, then we have bad news for OpenBSD users. Uh, again, OpenSMTP, the, the mail server that comes by default with OpenBSD has another remote code execution vulnerability. Just a couple weeks ago, they fixed a vulnerability in the mail from envelope command. Well, it's again actually in the envelope where there is the possibility to inject commands that will then be executed as root. And WhatsApp uses specific links to invite people to group chats. And of course, the security of the group chat depends on the security of this link. Sadly, it looks like many of these invite links ended up in search engines, including Google. So with some Google Foo, you are able to find and then connect to these private group chats. Looks like Google has for the most part removed those links, but other search engines have not yet. So if you know that there is a search engine called Bing or so, you may still be able to find these links and you probably want to check for any private WhatsApp groups that you are using, whether or not invite links show up in these search engines. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.